Okay, so I just wanted to go over um, how you can use uh, PT3D to use uh, one of your own height maps. I've got uh, a height map that I made in, uh, in the external program. All you have to do is take that other height map and rename it to roads1.png and that's going to put it in the the hidden texture that uh, PT3D uses for mixing. Now later I'm going to make it so you can select that, but for now you just have to save it as roads one. So it's replacing the old test roads that I had here. Anyhow, so we're going to use this roads one. Now when Prime Train loads, the first thing it does is generate the default um, terrain. And that's procedurally made, so you're not going to want to uh, use that if you're looking for your own hand-built height map. What we need to do is make it uh, use your your new terrain. So we want to go to full replace mode on the mix. We're replacing all the procedurally generated vert data or height data with what's in your file. So if we build that, we get this, which is kind of interesting on its own. Um, but in this case it was lava, so we don't need the height map, or sorry, we don't need the gradient. So if we build the train again now, that's just the height map data, no gradient. And we want to get rid of that moon skin. Well, I happen to have already saved the uh, lava texture, the diffuse texture. There we go. So now we've just applied the lava texture to that. Now, again, so you're putting it to replace mode and you're using this texture. Everything else needs to be blank for this, but it's still going to be 100 units by 100 units trying to use two surfaces and one to one. So that means there's 100 quads. If we look to wireframe, it'll be 100 quads by 100 quads. If you wanted more detail, I recommend popping that up to 4, putting that to 2, and then rebuild again. Done. Now you can throw in a mixing detail level if you want. You could put purlin, uh, and I've already generated... I've already generated that. You could just leave the purlin uh, info there. Oops, no texture that fast. I must have, uh, let's have a quick look. Perlin. Oh, haha, it wasn't made. Okay, well that's no biggie. Let's make it. So. Let's do this. So that just built the terrain there. Now, because it built that texture, I can now put this back, because you'll see that now G2 exists. So, and it's not mapped very good, but, so, I'm going to just build the train, and the pawn. Okay. But, uh, we want to work channel 0, 1, and we want to set its mapping to be, say, 16 parts. Now, it does look very dark, but when you get up close, you'll notice that the lava has a noise detail in it. And you could probably adjust the multiplication mode to be something bright, but I just wanted to show that. Um, obviously, you can fix that. Just delete that, build it in. There you go. But you can see the detail map would help. Um, later, I'm going to be giving you guys the ability through this key here to set how that mixes, whether it's going to multiply, add, you know, the various texture flags that it can do. Um, but anyhow, that's just a very quick overview of how to get it to generate your, your third party app built plate maps. And of course, this is a lava world, so you might want to get the background and that might be too high. So let's try to look at what you want to keep. 
So that's a good book. Let me closer to a, a lot of fake coin. So for the most part, if you just want to use your own map, you want this to be on your place. That's all. And you just want your diffuse texture here. If you have a second that seems like they want to move them, you can put it in that slot. If you click here, this stuff isn't going to populate yet, so don't worry about that. It's just put in the height map area. Um, and again, just build. And there you go. Just to amplitude, that'll be um, how much the height affects the place here, just as it would be in the normal way. Anyhow, thanks for watching.